Hi, I'm Danny, and these are my diecast disasters. And in this video, I'm going to be using this Wii Matchbox Jeep Gladiator from the 1960s to make a diorama based on the 1990 movie and subsequent long-running franchise, Tremors. So if you remember, Tremors was about giant underground worm sort of things that starred Kevin Bacon and Michael Gross who would continue to reprise his role as the gun-touting Burt Gummer right through till present day starring in all seven of the movies that they've made and also the short-lived TV series so back to our little Jeep Gladiator uh, Matchbox made these from 64 till 68 so just the standard issue disassemble there was one post holding the base on and then this little short one holding in the windscreen you can note that the rear wheels are attached to the casting rather than base So they're popping the windscreen out and I'm not going to have to take off the rear wheels because I'm going to be cutting that bed off of the back so it's not the right type. So I'll just start out with the cutting disc on my rotary tool and then finish off with a saw. Once I've cut the bed off, I'll give it a good clean up with my file. I'm going to try and get it as flat as I can when I attach a new bed onto it. And there we go. Right, so the Jeep Gladiator in the movie had a step side bed on it. So here's one that I found on Thingiverse and I've printed one on my resin printer. Here it is after I've tidied it up and taken all the supports off. And so that's going to go on to the rear of the Jeep like that. But uh, first I'll need to remove the paint off of those castings. So I managed to miss it with my camera, but I've applied some paint stripper on there. And I can wash off the paint and give the castings a clean up with the wire brush on my rotary tool. Make sure to wear your glasses when you do this so that you don't get little shards of metal in your eye. Okay, there's our castings cleaned up. Right, so next I'll be gluing the bed onto the rear of the cab. Like so. I'll just use some soup glue to glue that on there. Alright, so next I've designed a chassis for the truck. It's just a pretty low poly one. I've designed it kind of simple so that I can print it on my PLA filament printer. And here it is after I've printed it and cleaned it up. And so you can see how it fits in there. 
like that. And there's a bit of a gap there under the bed and also you can see through where the motor was so I'll have to fill those in and then when I put the interior in and I'll test fit it you can see it's not quite closing up properly and it's also when I push it so that it's closed properly it's pushing the seat forward a bit and when I take it back out you can see it's because there's a couple of tabs there and a little lip that are getting pressed up so I've just cut those off and now when I put it back together so let's see it's slipping down a bit because there's no tabs there now but that doesn't matter so when I put it back together it's fitting all nice and snug and the seats aren't getting pushed forwards anymore. I glue a block of styrene on the front of the chassis there to fill in where the motor would be. Now you can't see through there anymore. And I also glued a little piece of styrene on under the bed to fill that in as well so now the gap there has gone here are the wheels for it 3d printed those as well So they're going to go on there and that's how they'll look and to attach those onto the chassis I used my pin vise to drill out the little holes in the chassis and the back of the wheels to fit this piece of steel rod then I can just cut off some short pieces of the rod and I'll glue them into the back of the wheels like so now I can glue those onto the chassis when I need to easy as Okay, so now I'll move on to some painting. And I started out by just hitting the inside of the bed there with some black. And then I've given the whole thing a base coat of silver. Next I hit it all with some white primer. There's the doors as well. And to paint it, I've got here some light blue and some really thinned down white. And so I hit it with the blue and then while that was still wet, I quickly gave it a really light uh, spray with the thinned down white. And they sort of blend together to give it a faded look. Here's some little Val and Earl's odd job decals to go on the door. Val and Earl were the two, the two of the main characters of the original movie. They were played by Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward. Fred Ward actually went on to star in the second movie as well. And the Jeep Gladiator starred in the first and second movies as well. So next I detailed the truck. It's just the bumpers and the white and the lights and grill and that little fire extinguisher or whatever it is on the side there. And now I'm using some sponge just to apply some really 
light rust chipping here and there. forget to apply a little bit to the doors as well I've also detailed the interiors of those and finally to finish it off I've got some Tamiya dust weathering powder and I'm going to apply that reasonably liberally all over the truck and once I've finished that, I fixed it with just a really light coat of matte clear. And again, not forgetting to apply it onto the doors as well. Okay, so there's the body done. We'll move on to the chassis. I start out with some black primer. Then I gave it a light coat of silver over the top of that. Next I'm going to put a black wash all over it. And then once that had dried, I airbrushed it with some Vallejo rust texture. It's like a very matte, dark brown rust color. And again, finishing it with a quite heavy coat of the Tamiya dust weathering powder. Before again, fixing it with some matte clear Next, the wheels. So I start out with a couple of coats of black. Then I hit the rims with a really thin coat of gunmetal. And finishing them with the weathering powder as well. And then once they were fixed with some matte clear, I can glue them onto the chassis. Here's the interior after I've detailed that. And here are all the parts of our little custom Jeep Gladiator laid out to go back together. So I'll pop the windscreen in there. And then just use a tiny dot of super glue to hold that in place I'm using the thin Starbond super glue. So I'll wait about five minutes for that to dry properly and then I can continue assembling it. So I'll put the doors in place first.
It's a little bit fiddly. I'm wondering if this is how they would have done it originally. Maybe there's an easier way. Right, so now they're in position and I can put the interior in and that holds the doors in place. And then finally I can clip the chassis on there, hold it all in place. And I'm just going to use another little drop of the thin super glue to hold the rear of the chassis on there. Here are some little extras I've printed. There's a couple of crates there and some tools. Printed those on my resin printer as well. So I've just stuck them in the back there. And for a little driver here I've got this little guy. He's a worker though and he's got like a hard hat on. So I had to cut that off with my Dremel and I've replaced it with a cowboy hat and there he is detailed with his jeans and jean jacket and his cowboy hat now it's time to meet the other star of the show oops he's trying to escape there we go the graboid and I've printed this as well on my resin printer so I'll give him a paint job. So I hit him with some white primer and then detailed him. Red in his mouth there. He's got a bit of a brown chest and the rest of him's kind of black. And I'll finish him off with some dust weathering powder as well. And the last thing from my resin printer, I've printed out this prop of some old tires and crates and drums. So I'll hit that with some white primer and detail it as well. This is a Gaslands prop, but I thought it went quite well with the theme of the diorama. Speaking of which, now I've painted all of our elements, we can move on to the diorama base. So I'm going to be using this cheap photo frame, picture frame. Cost me a couple of dollars, I think, and you can get all different sized frames, so they make really good bases for dioramas. So I'll open up the back and I'm going to take out the glass. And I'll take the stand and the hook off of that sheet of wood there. And I can put that back in later. I've got some extruded foam here. I've cut the basic shape of my base out of it. Next, I'm going to protect the frame with some masking tape.
And now I can use some filler to build up the base. There's a couple of chunks in this. It's an old pot of filler. So I'm just using like drywall filler, spackling, whatever you call it here. But there's other types of filler you can get stuff for models, or you could even probably use plaster of Paris if you went about it the right way. Right, so here's that after it's mostly dried. It's not fully dried yet though, it's still kind of soft. I've marked out where the graboid is going to go. And now I'll cut out a little hole for him. Okay, so there's the graboid fitting in there nicely. Next, I'm going to take some of this cork board stuff. It's sticky on the back, but it's not sticking very well to this. Anyway, I'll break off some little pieces and arrange them around the edges of the hole. And they all end up looking like cracked chunks of soil. And there they are, all arranged how I like them. As they're not sticking very well to the filler, I'm just going to drizzle some watered down PVA glue around them. They can just seep in there and hold them in place once it's dried. Here's the graboid hole after that glue's dried. Just going to add a little bit more of the filler around the edges. So I leave that all to dry for a bit longer. And next I'll place the old tires and barrels prop in place there. Just mark around it quickly. Then I'm just going to use my craft knife to flatten that area off a little bit so that it'll sit flat when I go to stick it on later on. And so you can see it's sitting on there nicely now. Next I fired up my airbrush with a couple of shades of brown and tan. And I also hit underneath it with some black. Next I'm going to add some soil. So I'm going to paint the whole thing in some PVA glue. And here I've got some dried sieved clay colored soil, deserty sort of colored soil. And I'm going to sprinkle that all over. If you're making a few dioramas, it's good to have a collection of different colored soils that you've dried out in the oven. And then you can crush them up and sieve them. And you have different shades of soil that might be useful for different dioramas. So I sprinkle that all over it so you've covered all of the glue. And then 
I left that to dry for an hour or two and I shook off the bulk of it and then I've wetted it down with some scenic cement which is just pretty much watered down PVA glue and here is how that looks once it's all dried and the scenic cement will keep all of the dirt in place so it looks like it's dry and dusty but it's actually quite hard so here I've got some of the same dirt and some PVA glue and I've mixed them up into a paste then I can spread some of that out where I'm going to stick the tire pile there we go and now I can just press the tires into that and that'll dry and hold them in place and look the same as the rest of the dirt I'm just using a skewer here to push a bit of the dirt and glue mixture into the little gaps and stuff Right, so this now needs to dry. I actually put the hair dryer over it for a while to speed it up. Here it is once it's mostly dried. Next I'm going to add some static grass. So I paint on some patches of glue where I'm going to want the grass to be. Then I use a static grass applicator to apply the grass. Uh, I didn't film that, there's plenty of tutorials on how to use a static grass applicator. And here it is after I've applied the grass. And so that's our patch of soil pretty much done. Next I'm going to paint the frame. So I can remove that masking tape. and I'm just going to give it a basic rusty effect so here I've hit it with some black primer next I'm going to give it a coat of silver so I'm just using a rattle can to do this And once that was dry, I'm going to give it a black wash all over. And here it is after that's dried. And next I've got a bit of sponge here and there's some rusty colours there. I'm just going to use the sponge to apply them all over the frame until it's all looking nice and rusty. And here it is after it's been rusted up and given a coat of matte varnish. And then I can put my base in there. And where it's cracked away at the corner here, I'm just going to put a few more dabs 
of PVA glue. Then I can sprinkle some dirt over that. And it'll give an effect like the edge is crumbling away. So I just have to wait for that to dry and then I can blow off all of the extra loose dirt. And finally we're going to glue our graboid in place. So he's just got a blob of glue on the base of him there. And I'm going to put another few dabs of PVA glue in around the base of him there where he's touching the ground and I'll just sprinkle a little bit more of the dirt on there to finish it off and so that is our diorama pretty much done I'll just have to put the Jeep Gladiator in place but I'll save that for the last shots thanks heaps for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video Stay tuned to see the pictures of the finished diorama. Thanks heaps to my Patreons for the support. Check out the links below. Like, subscribe, click the bell, and I'll catch you in the next one.